Hello there YouTube, this is Retro Marky. Now this is a magazine. This is something that we used to buy back in the day, mostly with our paper round money. We used to do paper rounds working seven days a week, believe it or not. 6.30 a.m. Monday until Saturday, and on Sunday it was a bonus day, so we got to start at 7 a.m. and have a slight lie-in. The downside to that were the bags weighed about five kilos. Anyhow, after doing our paper rounds, often we buy computer games, or in my case I like to buy magazines. So we're going to take a quick look at a couple of things in this one and focus on the ZX Microdrive. And here is one of the original advertisements. That's a beautiful advertisement. I always loved Sinclair stylings. I think the look and the colour of Sinclair machines and peripherals was always absolutely gorgeous and still is to this day. Have a look at the next page. So this is just when the microdrive came out in 1983, around the summer time. Now what's interesting is that's only about a year after the Spectrum was released, so fair play to Clive Sinclair, despite problems with a lot of machines being returned and uh, all sorts of delays, he did get the microdrive out fairly quickly. So here we have the advert for the microdrive and some of the cartridges and the interface that you needed um, and a couple of the bits of software there that were going to come out on the microdrive although I don't know whether they ever did to be honest. Here we've got Tay's LX81 advert. Again I love the artwork. Sinclair really were very original when it came to design and making things highly desirable. And down here you can see here's a microdrive. Quite a small little thing, not much bigger than an audio tape. Maybe a couple of inches by about an inch that way. Um, a bit unreliable and a little bit expensive at the time, especially as you needed one of these also, the ZX Interface 1, which basically plugs into the port of the Spectrum here, gives you a through port here and RS-423 microdrive plugged into here and an ear and mic socket there and you can see on the microdrive it had this connection here which goes into the interface and another one so you could put another microdrive up to eight I believe so absolutely good stuff problem was with the BBC micros were already around and it was quite common, although expensive, uh, to use floppy disks on that. So this was supposed to be a sort of rivalry to that. And the price, to be honest, I don't remember the microdrives being much cheaper than floppy drives. And here we have some original microdrives with some little sticky labels. Just show you one of them now. There it is, it's got like a it's almost like a cassette tape basically. And that will spin very fast. And give about 85k. Apparently it depended on certain factors exactly how much you got. In fact, the advert says compact, erasable, revolutionary, complete with its own storage sleeve. Contains up to 50 files with a typical access time of 3.5 seconds. And they cost 495 each. The microdrive itself was pointing there. At least 85k storage loads a typical 48 program in as little as nine seconds. So really good device, potentially, theoretically. Didn't do so well though. Um, probably because of the price and the non-standard nature of it. Obviously it wouldn't work with anything else. You have to buy specific cartridges from uh, Sinclair. So what I thought would be interesting is to actually look at the original review and this is a personal computer news and as a review of the microdrive right here which I thought would be nice to look at. Let's see what it says. 
Mass storage has always been the weak link in the sub £200 micro range. Until now, there has been no useful alternative to cassette recorders except disk drives. And as these take the cost of your system well above the £200 mark, they can hardly be termed an alternative in any case. Sinclair's microdrive has been designed to provide an immediate, sorry, an intermediate technology between the two, providing rather better access speed and file handling capabilities than the pedestrian cassette recorder while keeping the price in line with the micro it serves. The microdrive itself is about the size of an average fist. The real surprise is the interface one, cleverly designed to sit under the spectrum as well as connecting the microdrive through a short length of ribbon cable the interface one enables you to set up a network of computers and send information from one to the other so that was uh, early networking back in the day the BBC micro used to think called Econet and was very successful we had those in our schools and colleges spectrums I never really saw connected together in this way but um, was possible with this technology. Sinclair has thoughtfully prevented the interface one and micro drives being wobbly and unreliable appendages by providing screws so that the interface can be fastened securely to the body of the spectrum, preventing periodic system crash. You will have problems however if your spectrum is cased in a real keyboard. So when they say real keyboard they mean that although the standard spectrum came with one of these zombie dead flesh keyboards. A lot of people bought, for example, DKtronics keyboards that were more like proper full-size travel keyboards. The drives in the interface are very light. You can envisage someone producing a small carry case to transport the system around. Indeed, with the potential of the interface one, I wouldn't mind betting that we are likely to be deluged with a host of interactive games. Now that would have been fantastic. However, to my knowledge, that never actually happened. Not one game I don't think came out on the micro drive that really pushed the system into territories that it couldn't do before. If anyone knows any different then please let me know but as far as I know don't think that really happened. It may become the vogue for game players to get together with their respective spectrum systems for an in yeah, evening's entertainment. That would have also been nice uh, aka Doom on the uh, original PCs but again didn't really happen to my knowledge so here it goes on about the cartridge the access time can be as little as 3.5 seconds if the tapes are exactly the right position and if it's not could be up to 10 seconds they are 100k cartridges that are unformatted and the formatting takes about 30 seconds la di la di la once formatted, each cartridge can contain up to 50 files. This only requires a couple of keystrokes and 7 to 10 second wait to access these files. The operating system for the networking and drives is understood by the user as a series of channels and streams. Put simply, the channels and streams are conceptual ways of moving data around the system. The channels consist of the screen, ZX printer, microdrive files, another spectrum using the interface network RS232 to a standard printer or modem. Ah, okay, 232, excuse me, not 343. These are the original, these are the output channels, blah de blah de blah. I'm gonna stop there, it's getting a little bit boring. Over here, let's have a look. This is more the opinion by the looks of it. When Sinclair Spectrum was launched in April 82, there was much hoopla about the soon to be available cheap disk drive for the machines. As it turns out, the microdrive was neither available soon nor a real disk drive. It was launched last month and turned out to be a floppy tape with limited serial access, not the random access disk pack everyone had put their sights on. But it's probably not Sinclair's fault. After producing the ZX81 and the Spectrum, many people expected the impossible random access drives for under £100. Another expectation was that the operating system and spectrum was already set up to support the cat, close, delete, erase, format, move and open commands on the micro drives. Again the original impression was wrong. The micro drive interface module that you have to buy to run the drives actually contains the operating system. Sinclair research has always been slightly more modest 
in its claims about the micro drives, largely because the drives had been undergoing slight design changes all the way along. Sinclair claimed that each micro drive is capable of holding up to 100k using a single interchangeable micro floppy. The big question was, what did they mean by micro floppy? The answer was often speculated. Many people reaching the correct conclusion about the impossibility of a real disk drive and surmising that it would have to be a floppy tape or stringy floppy instead. The real surprise is not in the drive itself, but in the expansion module developed to interface with the Spectrum. The 30 pound, oh, this was 30 pound back in the day. It's actually more expensive now then. The 30 pound expansion module also gives you motor drive control over cassette tape storage, a plug-in for local area networking and an RS2 interface. RS232. The communication facility lets you network as many as 64 other spectrums at board rates as high as 9600 and as low as 50. The inside word from a prototype microdrive user is that the RS232 interface had some development problems. But if it proves to be reliable in the long term, it will be a great complement to the microdrive. Also, it's necessary for the microdrive. The inside word from a prototype microdrive user is that the RS232 interface had some development problems. But if it proves to be reliable in the long term, it will become a great complement to the microdrive. Imagine a small business using the Spectrum with a word processor or spreadsheet on a ROM cartridge with two microdrives for storage, a network connection, perhaps to other machines in a small office, and dot matrix or even daisy wheel printers running through the RS232. Sinclair has also said it soon plans to release software on microdrives in addition to the existing base of cassette software and the planned release of ROM software. Cassettes will likely remain the cheapest storage alternative to the, uh, for the Spectrum, but smaller programs can reside in the plug-in cartridges and big programs can take advantage of the microdrive's 100k. And that is pretty much it on the Spectrum microdrive. Let's see what the conclusion is. The microdrive doesn't represent any technological quantum leap. Stringy floppy products of this type have been around for some time. Its importance lies in Sinclair's backing. To be really useful, a storage medium must be tied into software. It has an effect to be perceived by the industry as a likely standard, with a substantial market available for the software products making use of it before it will be supported. Once the ball is rolling, however, it becomes very difficult to replace it with something else. So the microdrives are likely, all being well, to follow through on Sinclair products for some time. That's actually true because, of course, the Sinclair QL have built-in double microdrives. The average Spectrum owner wants to be able to run commercial games and applications on the chosen method of storage, not just load and save his own listings. That's very true. The bugbear with third-party products of this type was that users found that the built-in protection of the games um, prevented them from listing and resaving on an alternative storage system. Absolutely, that is the case. With Sinclair's backing, the software producers are likely to market several protected programs at a time on a microdrive cartridge. Perhaps even more importantly, it should be possible to write significantly more flexible personal slash business application programs for the system that have hitherto been practical given the limitations of the cassette recorder. I think there they mean have been impractical. I did read practical correctly. Sinclair ZXL interface 2995 with drive 49.95 by itself the ZX micro drive was 49.95 per drive cartridge is 495 and this is on mail order so there we go guys that's a quick look at the review in personal computer news magazine of the Sinclair micro drive okay retro marquee out